All right, YouTube, it's Detroit's HP TV coming to you out of Detroit. It's Friday the 12th, 823. I hope all y'all are enjoying y'all Friday and enjoy y'all weekend that's coming up. I want to talk about Joe Biden today because I was having a, a conversation with a friend of mine and the conversation really turned into a debate. Because he wanted to know why under no circumstances would I ever support the Biden administration and the Democrats. So, of course, he came out with the same old narratives he get from CNN, MSNBC. But I asked him, did he know Joe Biden's real record with the black community, black Americans? You know, Joe Biden was a strong segregationist. He was friends with KKK members Thurman and Byrd, you know, and he fought against integrating schools. He also said that he didn't want the white kids and the black kids to go to school together because the black kids would turn the school system into a racial jungle. You know, then he came up with the crime bill and labeled the black people in the, in the black community, super predators. I mean, he went on and on with his insults for decades. And then when he's in office, he opens the border. Let's in millions of illegal immigrants. Cuts unemployment benefits and then say unemployment is down. Their whole campaign, as I've stated before, is based on abortion, transgendering your children, wars. And I kept asking my friend, I'm saying, can you name any positive thing that Joe Biden and the Democratic Party has done for the black community, can you name any? And I stood and I waited for him to name one thing that Joe Biden did to help the community, and he couldn't. But he's been so uh, brainwashed by the Democrats that he's just going to vote for Biden because he was told to, or he think he should, or he has some type of loyalty to the Democratic Party. And I had to remind him, again, I said, you know, Abraham Lincoln was from the Republican Party. You know, the Democrats have always been the ones who hindered our elevation as a people in our communities. And I realized he didn't even know that Abraham Lincoln was a Republican. See, there's a lot of misinformation in our community. You know what I'm saying? And the ignorance is not going to be blessed, blissed if Joe Biden get another four years. He gets another four years. I had to ask my friend, I said, what does that really look like for you? What would it look like for the community? Because you can see where it's going now. It's going in direction to, to where it looks like it's collapsing. And there are no solutions. They're not even talking about solutions. They keep pushing the same narratives about abortion down our throats. So I want y'all to watch this clip. And it's for fair use under the 1976 Copyright Act for education commentary in the First Amendment. Check out Joe Biden's real history with our community. And I want you to see how Kamala is so disingenuous in telling the truth as it relates to Joe Biden. Check this out.
a national holiday in the U.S. The recognition of the holiday, which commemorates the end of slavery in the U.S., has been celebrated as a major symbolic shift away from the rhetoric of the Trump era. But many have forgotten this moment during the 2019 Democratic primary. And I'm going to now direct this at Vice President Biden. Um, I do not believe you are a racist. And I agree with you when you commit yourself to the importance of finding common ground. But I also believe, and it's personal, and I was actually very, it was hurtful to hear you talk about the reputations of two United States senators who built their reputations and career on the segregation of race in this country. And it was not only that, but you also work with them to oppose busing. And, you know, there was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. Despite insisting that she wasn't calling Biden racist, Harris was in fact accusing him of preventing black students from integrating into white schools and of being friends with openly racist politicians. So, what is Joe Biden's real record on race? Harris wasn't inaccurate in her criticism of Biden, who has a checkered history on racial justice, despite painting himself as a staunch civil rights advocate over the years. Perhaps one of the most criticized moments in Biden's past is his involvement in the creation of the notorious 1994 crime bill. People forget that the informal name for the bill was Biden's crime law. The legislation is widely criticized for being responsible for making the effects of mass incarceration in the U.S. Now, let me say this. I'm going to interject. I'm going to finish. You see, his administration have already weaponized the Justice Department. You know, they're telling you this the first time in history that a presidential administration used the Department of Justice and law enforcement to attack a political opponent. Well, at the same time, having no answer for immigrant crime and the things that's going on in society. You know, it's almost as if he's deliberately undermining the very country he's supposed to lead, selling us out to the highest bidder. You know, money going, all the money going for wars and overseas while the community suffers. financially worse. Biden was also a key architect of the devastating Iraq war. Responsibility for the war is often blamed on George W. Bush, Dick Cheney, and other Republicans. But in reality, Biden played a key role as a Democrat. In the lead up to the war, Biden convened a series of Senate hearings to drum up support for the invasion on the basis of flimsy intelligence material being presented by the Republicans. What is the threat from Iraq? Obviously, the full answer to this question will require us to have additional enclosed hearings. Not a single anti-war voice was invited to the hearings. Biden also admits to having been civil with Democratic colleagues who were openly racist, like James Eastland, who had a long history of racist remarks, including that black Americans belonged to an inferior race. As well as the segregationist Herman Talmadge, who vigorously opposed school integration. Governor, this means in effect that your state would set up a private school system. We intend to maintain separate schools in Georgia, one way or another, come what may. Biden also developed a decades-long friendship with segregationist Strom Thurmond, who he worked with attempting to pass the Biden-Thurmond Violent Crime Control Act in 1991. Biden also spoke at his funeral. We became good friends. I'm not sure exactly why or how it happened, Nancy. Did you know we did? In the lead-up to the 2008 election, Biden was also in the spotlight for a number of comments, including referring to Barack Obama as articulate and clean and associating Indian immigrants with Dunkin' Donuts and 7-Eleven chains. Do these gaps or misunderstandings or however you would characterize them indicate you are uncomfortable talking about race or are people just being too sensitive? I think that uh, I have my whole career. I got involved in public policy. I got involved in politics because of the civil rights movement. Biden also has an unreliable history surrounding his own involvement in the civil rights struggle. He has at times claimed to have been deeply involved at other times not that active and in the lead up to the 2020 election once again claimed to have been heavily involved he was also caught out claiming to have been arrested trying to visit nelson mandela this day 30 years now i want y'all to listen carefully 
And y'all think about it. Tell me who lies like this. He's going to tell a lie. So bodacious. And then come back and correct it when he when he gets exposed. So, so you know, you could tell he lies to you all the time. Years ago, Nelson Mandela walked out of prison and entered into discussions about apartheid. I had the great honor of meeting you. I had the great honor of being arrested with our UN ambassador on the streets of Soweto trying to get to see him on Robbins Island. You now say you weren't arrested and it didn't happen in Soweto. You were at the airport in Johannesburg and you were stopped from going through the door for blacks. I guess the question is, were you confused or were you just trying to embellish a story? Offered the chance to run with Biden in 2020. Kamala Harris's once scathing criticisms about race faded away, and the two have worked closely since winning the election. I believe you that you're fully supportive of him. How does that transition happen? How do you go from being such a passionate opponent on such bedrock principles for you, and, and now you guys seem to be pals? It was a debate. <laughs> Not everybody landed punches like you did, though. It if was you... a debate. <laughs> so you don't mean it. It was a debate. That the whole reason, literally, it was a debate. It was called a debate. I understand. Travel to the debate. There were journalists there covering the debate where there was. So what she's saying is, in a in a debate, it's okay to lie and say things you don't mean in order to overcome your opponent. That's what she's saying. But these are the people that want to run the country and want the American citizens to trust them. She's sitting there saying, it was a debate, so I just said anything, basically. Be a debate of differences of opinion and issues. I am 1000% supportive of Joe Biden, and I will again do everything I can to make sure he is elected. The Democrats may be keen to forget Biden's past, but should everyone else have to as well? And that's the question. Should we forget Joe Biden's racial history while he is out here demonizing everybody else for their uh, racial remarks or gaffes. I've noticed that most of the time, if you debate with a Democrat, they can't tell you anything that they're going to do for the community, and they cannot make any statement supporting voting for them without using Donald Trump's name. At this time, we got to be very critical in our analysis of these people and how much they lie and how many things that they do that actually hurt the public. You know what I mean? They don't just make remarks. They pass bills and legislation that undermines the community. And they do it deliberately. And they come right back out and lie in our faces and talk crazy to us like we still under the influence of their power or they still the plantation masters and we got to fall in line to their rhetoric. So the question he asked in this video, I'm asking again, should we forget Joe Biden's real history with black Americans. Think on that. Should we forget? Why? If if you think we should forget and give him a pass, tell me why. Considering what's going on in this country right now. But you, you know, tell me what you think. Standing to you are Detroit. Salute to all patriots. Keep your head on a swivel. Like, share, and subscribe.